All praises. Again, tonight's topic is called, Let Not Sin Rule Over You. Let Not Sin Rule Over Thee. Okay, let's open up with the book of Romans. Romans chapter 6 and verse 12. Romans 6 verse 12. Let's start there. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Come on. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Read it again. Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. He says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So we're going to deal with that. Give me that in 1 John 3 and 4. Let's understand what sin is. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. The scriptures, this is a commandment right here. He says, let not, let not, thou shalt not, let not sin therefore reign, meaning rule, in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. First John chapter 3 verse 4. Read that. First John chapter 3 verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the breaking of God's laws. Okay, read that again. First John chapter 3 verse 4. Mm. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law he says whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law so sin is the breaking of god's laws when you break god's commandments is called sin you are sinning okay go back to where he was at romans chapter 6 verse 12 romans chapter 6 verse 12 mm -hmm. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So now the Apostle Paul is speaking in the spirit of Christ here. He says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Don't let the breaking of God's laws rule over your mortal body, your, your fleshly body. Okay? That you should obey it, obey sin, the breaking of God's laws in the day of your lust. That's what he's saying. Watch this. Give me the book of wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 14. Let not sin, let not the breaking of God's laws rule over you. That's what he's saying. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 14. Come on. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, mm -hmm. and our devices are but uncertain. So now he's saying this. What we just read, he says, the thoughts of mortal men because mortal men have mortal bodies. That is the bodies we've got now. We've got mortal bodies because our what? Our, our thoughts was mortal. You understand? Why? Because of sin. The reason why our, our thoughts now is mortal thoughts is because of sin. Now, as a result, our bodies are also mortal. We die now instead of living forever. Okay, read that again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Go ahead. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, mm -hmm. and our devices are but uncertain. Our plans are but uncertain. Why? Because our mind is miserable. So it says, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Give me that in Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Let's see the thoughts of mortal men. The thoughts of sinful men is what? Miserable. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Let's examine this thing. What is the Lord really teaching us here? The thoughts of mortal men. Okay, read that. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Come on. The heart is deceitful above all things mm -hmm. and desperately wicked. Who read. can know it? You see what he's saying? The heart is deceitful. The thoughts of mortal men is miserable. Why? That misery is brought out by deceit, guile, bitterness, and so forth. He's saying the heart, he says, the heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked, who can know it? The Lord knows it. You understand? He knows how our minds are. He knows that our mind is full with evil. Our mind is always occupied with evil. So that's why he gave us the law that is approved of all. Why? So that we can cleanse our spirits. We can cleanse our, our evil thoughts. We can cleanse our wicked minds. 
You understand? Read that again, verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The heart is deceitful above all things Come and on. desperately wicked. Mm -hmm. Who can know it? Who can know it? The Lord knows the thing. Okay, go back to where he was at now. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 14. Come on. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. So the thoughts of mortal men are, are what? He says they are miserable. Because think about it. Right now as a people, we are living in misery. You understand? Why? Because of our thoughts. Our thoughts departed from the Most High. You understand? That's why now our thoughts is miserable because of what? Our thoughts departed from the Most High because our heart was deceitful. You understand? We allowed ourselves to be deceived by our lusts because we fulfilled our lusts. You understand? When our fleshly bodies wanted to fill those, fulfill those lusts, we acted upon those things. Read that again, verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Come on. And our devices are but uncertain. Now give me Isaiah 55, verse 7. The thoughts of mortal men is miserable. Okay? Watch this. Isaiah 55, verse 7. Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 7. Read. Let the wicked forsake his way. Mm. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. You see that part right there? Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Why? Because our minds is miserable. The thoughts of mortal men is miserable. So that's why Isaiah here in the spirit of Christ is saying, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Because an unrighteous man will have unrighteous thoughts, which causes misery and pain. Go ahead. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. Go ahead. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. You see what he's saying? And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. So when we return unto the Lord, how do we return? The first thing we must do, we must forsake our wicked ways. Um, read verse 7 again so I can catch my thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7. Read. Let the wicked forsake his way. Mm. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Come on. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. So now, the most, this is the stipulation right here. He says, let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. Guess what? When we return unto the Lord, the first thing we must do, we must forsake our wicked ways, we must forsake our unrighteous thoughts. You understand? That's why he says, um, the thoughts of mortal men are miserable because our thoughts is not according to the thoughts of the Most High. The thoughts of the Most High is this Bible. When we read the scriptures, we, we see how evil our thought process is. Now, our job is to what? Is to cleanse our ways by applying what the law, the Most High God has commanded us. How we must think, you understand? So our thought process must be in line with his thought process. And that takes time. It takes practice. It takes diligence. It takes studying and applying. Read. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7. Come on. Let the wicked forsake his way. Read. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Come on. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. The Lord will abundantly pardon us from our sins. He will have mercy upon us and he will pardon our sins. Read. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Read. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Come on. You see what he's saying? He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. So that's why he's saying to us, he says, let the wicked forsake his way. Because it says, our ways is not according to his ways. It says, and the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Why? Because our thoughts are not according to his thoughts. Read verse 8 again. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8. Read. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. 
Read. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You see what he's saying? And my thoughts than your thoughts. So the Most High God, he gave us this book to cleanse our thought process, to change our ways. You understand? The Most High God wants us to change our minds and to change our ways. That's what he wants, to be renewed in the spirit of in the spirit of, of our mind. Our minds must be renewed. Our thought process must be changed. That's what the Lord wants. Okay? That is what the Most High God wants. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, Come on. and our devices are but uncertain. Read. Come on. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul, mm -hmm. and the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. So now, do you see what he's saying? The, the thoughts, the mortal thoughts, they are the ones that are, they are what? The corruptible body is connected to a, a, a to, to connect to mortal thoughts. So you have, you have he says, for the, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. So these mortal thoughts are connected to a corruptible body, you, which presses down the soul, meaning what? Because your soul is supposed to be what's supposed to grow. Your soul is supposed to grow. Watch this. Go back to Isaiah. So we don't lose the thought. Go back to Isaiah chapter 55 and verse... Read Isaiah 55, start of verse 1. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1. Read. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So when he says, well, he that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, the waters is the word of God. You understand? If you are thirsty, you must come and drink the word of the Most High and be cleansed and be quenched. Okay, go ahead. Verse 2, watch this. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Mm -hmm. And your labor, and your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. So now it says, wherefore do you, wherefore it says, why do you spend money for that which is not bread? Meaning you are spending money on things that are what? That will not profit you. It says, and your labor, and you, and your labor for that which satisfieth not. That's the same thing Haggai says in Haggai chapter one. You, you understand? He says, you eat, but you're not satisfied. You are not, you are not filled. You drink, but you're not filled with drink and so forth. I'm paraphrasing it. Okay. Now watch this. You see that part he says, and ye eat that which is good. And he says, and eat that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. You see that part right there? Let your soul, your soul. So the earthy tabernacle, your sinful flesh is going to destroy your soul. Because your soul is to do what? Your, your soul is supposed to learn the word of God. That's how your soul prospers. Your soul is going to prosper when you what? When you learn the word of the Most High God and apply it. That's how your soul is going to prosper. So that's why it says, and let your soul, because the subject matter is about your soul. Let your soul delight itself in fatness. Give me that in uh, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 5. Proverbs 9, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 5. Come on. Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. He says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Give me John 6. Give me John chapter 6, verse 55. Okay, John chapter 6. John 6, verse 55. You know what? Start at verse 48. We're going to be jumping around a little bit in this chapter. So John chapter 6, verse 48. The book of John chapter 6, verse 48. I am that bread of life. I'm that what? I am that bread of life. This is Christ speaking. He says, he is that bread of life. You understand? He is that bread of life. Because this Bible 
is that bread of life because this is the body of Christ. Okay, read on. Jump down to verse 51 now. Verse 51. Come on. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, mm. which I will give for the life of the world. Which I'm going to give for the 12 tribes of Israel. He says, it, he, he that eat, he says if, if any man eat of this bread, meaning his body, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life, for the life of the world. So what is he talking about? He's talking about when he was going to be crucified for the 12 tribes of Israel. Now jump down to verse, verse 54. Go ahead. Verse 54. Mm -hmm. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. At the last day. We are, this is the last day. We are in the last days right now. That's why the Lord is waking us up. Okay, come on. For my flesh is meat indeed, mm. and my blood is drink indeed. Remember, he says, his bre that bread is his flesh. That's what we read in verse 51. Read verse 51 again. John chapter 6, verse 51. Mm -hmm. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So he's letting you know that the bread that I will give is my flesh. Now read verse 55 again. Verse 55. Mm -hmm. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. So that drink is the wine which is, represents his blood. The blood that he shed for the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, that's what he's talking about right here. So now, when we go back, go back to um, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 5 again. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. He says, come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Accept the sacrifice that Christ made, and keep the commandments in the faith of his son, the Christ. Okay, go back to where he was at. Isaiah 55, verse 2 again. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 2. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, mm -hmm. and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight in itself in fatness. It let your soul delight itself in fatness because your soul is, your corruptible body will press down your soul. Your soul is supposed to what? Your soul is thirsty. It's supposed to learn. It's supposed to come. He said, that is come and eat without money and without price. You don't pay for this. You come to learn. You apply. You understand? That's what he's talking about right here. So go back to Wisdom of Solomon now, chapter 9, verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15. Read. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul, and the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. You see, the corruptible body is the earthy tabernacle. The corruptible body is the earthy tabernacle, which is what? The mortal body in Romans 6, verse 12. Remember, don't forget the thought now. He says, let not sin reign in your mortal body, that ye may obey it in the last thereof. So the mortal body is the corruptible body, which is the earthy tabernacle. Our frail bodies that we got. That's what he's talking about. That's why the, mind, the most high God, he wants us to get our minds right first. Before he gives us those bodies that we are going to be on that God level. We cannot, get, you cannot have those bodies, the God level bodies, if the mind is not right. If the mind is corrupt. Okay. Read that again. Verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15. Read. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul, and the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. The earthy tabernacle, he says, the earthy tabernacle weigheth down the mind that muses upon many things. Give me that in Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Galatians 5, verse 17. 
Because what King Solomon is saying here is the same thing that the Apostle Paul is going is, is gonna, is gonna to teach us in the book of Galatians. Read that. Galatians 5 verse 17. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. Read. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the spirit against the flesh. Read. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Read verse 17 again. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. Come on. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the spirit against the flesh. Read. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So it says the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Meaning what? Your body will fight against the spirit. You understand? Give me that in Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Your flesh, meaning the sin, the lust that is in you, is going to fight with the spirit of the Most High. You understand? Which is what you're supposed to do. We're supposed to uh, walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. You understand? So there's a constant war. There's a constant battle on a daily basis. The flesh fighting against the spirit. Meaning what you know what you're supposed to do according to the law versus what your body lust is lusting for. Watch this. Um, read that. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Romans chapter 7 verse 14. Read. For we know that the law is spiritual. Mm -hmm. But I am carnal, sold under sin. He says we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. So what is the spirit? The law. The laws of God, that's the spirit right there. So go back to Galatians now. Chapter 5, verse 17 again. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. Read. For the flesh lusted against the spirit. Mm. And the spirit against the flesh. And, the and spirit, these are contrary this, the one on. to the other. And the spirit against the flesh. Meaning what the laws of God say is contrary to what your flesh wants. What your flesh wants is fighting against what God says. So that's the constant battle. That's why it says, go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 16 again. We coming, we coming back to we coming back to Galatians. So don't lose Galatians. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 15 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15. Mm -hmm. For the corruptible body presses no, no. down the soul. V verse 16. Uh, is it? Yeah, verse 15. I'm sorry. Verse 15 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15. Read. For the corruptible body presses down the soul, mm -hmm. and the earthly tabernacle with down the mind that museth upon many things. So this, I mean, upon many, so this corruptible body, which is the earthy tabernacle, that's what does the mortal body in Romans. You understand? That's the flesh that is fighting against the spirit. You understand? The spirit is the laws of God. God says thou shalt not steal. But because your flesh is used to stealing, guess what you're going to do? You're going to do that. You understand? But you, the spirit says thou shalt not. Your body says, I want, I want to do that because that's what my flesh is lusting for. Guess what? Thou shalt not commit adultery. When your, your flesh says, no, I want to have sex. But your mind says, the scripture says thou shalt not. Don't be watching porn. Guess what? Your spirit will say, the spirit says, uh, it says, whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his mind. Just by looking at it, that's adultery. You understand? That's what the law says. But your flesh is saying, mm -mm, I want that instant gratification. You understand? That's the constant battle that we all have to fight on a daily basis. That's why the Apostle Paul says, I die daily. Okay? So every day is a constant battle. And these evil thoughts are not going to escape our minds until the Lord returns. So our job is to keep them at bay. How? We must constantly be applying God's commandments. Okay? Watch this. Um, give me the book of Romans, chapter 7. Give me Romans, chapter 7, verse 18. Watch this. We're still dealing with the earthy tabernacle that, way, that what? That weighed down the mind that muses upon many things. You understand? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Romans 7 verse 18. Read that. Romans chapter 7 verse 18. Come on. 
For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will, for to will is present within me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. So the Apostle Paul now is explaining the same thing that we read in Galatians. The same thing that King Solomon is explaining, he's going over the same thing here. He says, for I know that in me, that is, he's, he's being specific, in my flesh, in my mortal body, you understand, in my earthy tabernacle, in my corruptible body, you understand, it says, dwelleth no good thing. What is the good thing? Give me that in First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8. First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8. If you, if you ever hear somebody says, I'm not dealing with nothing, they are lying to you. There's, you cannot come into this truth and you are not dealing with something. It's impossible. Okay, give me 1 Timothy 1, verse 8. Read what you got. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Read. But we know that the law is good. Mm. If a man use it lawfully. He says, but we know that the law is good. The law is good. So what the Apostle Paul is talking about here, he's talking about the laws of God. When he says, go back to where he was at now, Romans 7 verse 18. Romans chapter 7 verse 18. Come on. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present within, with, with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. He says, for to will, meaning what the good, the good thing that I want to do, I'm unable to do it. Why? Because of what? Because of the good that I find not in me, meaning in my flesh. Because what's supposed to be in us, the good that's supposed to be in us, is the laws of God. That's what is good. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. You see what he's saying? That's the constant battle. You understand? That is the give me that in Second Ezra, chapter seven, verse fifty-five. Uh, Second Ezra seven, verse fifty-six. Let's start there. Let's start at verse fifty-six. Second Ezra, chapter seven, verse fifty-six. Let's read that. Second Ezra, chapter seven, verse fifty-six. Go ahead. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Read that again. Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 56. Read. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should suffer, that we should begin to suffer for it after death. So the, the, the prophet Ezra, he's saying, listen, for while we lived and committed iniquity, meaning what? Broken God's commandments, we allowed sin to rule over us. That's the same thing we just read in, in, in Romans. We considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Because after death, if we don't repent in this life that the Lord has given us, after death, we're going to suffer for this day. You understand? We're going to pay. Because if the Lord doesn't get you in this life, he will get you in another. But you will not escape. You understand? That's why the Lord has given us this chance to get ourselves together so that we do not suffer. We don't, we don't get twice the penalty. We don't, we don't get burned when the Lord returns and woken up after a thousand years and what? Which is the final judgment and you burn forever in pain forever. You don't want that. That's why now the liberty which we was given, we must use it. Okay, we must not abuse it. We must utilize it. Read that again, verse 56. Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 56. Mm -hmm. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Now watch this. Jump up to verse 47. Because right now it says, we are, right now as we are living now, we are committing iniquity, the Lord says. It says, we don't consider that we are going to suffer for it after death. So guess what? We must use the liberty we with Christ has delivered us so that we may be able to get ourselves together and prepare for the wilderness. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 47. Second Ezra chapter 7, verse 47. Read. For, what is it? for men now in this present time to live in heaviness, 
and after death to look for for punishment. Okay, I need you to put some power in your reading. Come on. Verse 47 again. Second is 7 verse 47. For what profit is it for men for men now in this present time to live in heaviness and after death to look for punishment? So now you see what Ezra is saying? He says, what profit is it for men now in this present time to live in heaviness? Because right now we are living in heaviness. You understand? Everything is bad for us. Everything is not good. So he's saying, in this present time, we're living in heaviness. He says, and after death, to look for punishment. So now we're, we're catching hell now. And now guess what? Because we don't want to repent, after death, we still gonna we still want to be punished after death. You understand? That's when we allow that when we allow sin to reign in our mortal bodies. This is exactly what's gonna happen. You understand? So we need to avoid this thing and get our minds right and get it together and cleanse ourselves from our own evils in the spirit of Christ. Because we can do it, and it is possible because it is written. The Lord says, Be ye therefore perfect as your father which is in heaven is perfect. So therefore, that perfection is possible. We must apply what is written. So daily we must fight. You have to fight. You don't give up. If you give up, shame on you. But you have to fight to overcome this thing. Second Ezra 7 verse 57 now. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 57. Come on. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle. This is the condition which, of the battle. Read. Which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. You see what he's saying? This is the condition of the battle. Which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. So understand, you have to fight. You can't just sit down and take it lying down. Mm -mm. You have to stand up and fight. Defend the gospel. Show yourself worthy to the most High. That no matter what's coming upon me, I'm going to fight. Because it's written that Everything that is that which you have already, hold fast till I come. Guess what we're going to do? We are going to stand bold as a lion. We're going to fight until we overcome this thing. Don't give up, brothers and sisters. Don't give up. Giving up is not, it's not a, they, listen, we are at the end of this thing. Don't give up for nothing. Okay? You don't give up. You fight. Read again verse 57. Second is chapter 7 verse 57. Read. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle. Great. Which men, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. Come on. Come on. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. So if but you are if he get the if, victory. If, hold on. If you don't overcome, he says you're going to suffer as he, as he has explained. Meaning what? You're going to suffer for it after death. If you are overcome. If you never overcome your own sins, that's what he's saying. Next part of the verse. Read. But if he get the victory, mm. he shall receive the thing that I say. He said, but if, if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. What is that? The kingdom. You will receive the kingdom if you endure unto the end. Endurance. You understand? In order for endurance to occur, you need to be in the midst of a fight. And guess what? You're going to lose some. You will, you will win. You lose some fights. But you're going to what? You're going to win some fights as well. But you have to fight until you win. You have to develop that endurance level. You understand? To endure the temptations that will come upon you. I'm going to tell you straight up. That's not easy to do. You understand? It is, is it possible? Yes. Is it worth it? Absolutely. So don't get it twisted. So Christ says we can do it. It will be done. We just have to endure, brothers and sisters. Now, watch this. Go back. Go back to Romans. Go back to Romans now, chapter 7. Okay, verse 19. Romans chapter 7 and verse 19. Romans chapter 7, verse 19. Mm -hmm. For the good thing that I, that I would... No, for no, the good no. Thing that I would... No, for the good... For the good that I would do, okay, read that right, read it again. Romans chapter 7 verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not, 
but the evil which I would not, that I do. You see what he's saying? But he says, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Go ahead. Verse 20. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is more I that it is no more that I do it. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Okay, read verse 20 again. Read it right. Romans chapter 7 verse 20. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do, that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So now that's heavy right there. He says, now if I do that, I would not. If I do the things that I don't want to do, he listen to what he says. He says, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. What is sin? The breaking of God's laws. So guess what? That's the same thing we read in Romans 6 verse 12 when it says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, your corruptible body, your earthy tabernacle, that you should obey it in the last thereof. So what he's saying, he says, the last, he says, so basically saying, the sin that dwelleth in him is what he obeys in the last thereof. So in the day of his last, you understand, he obeys that sin. You understand? So that's what he's saying right there. Read verse 21 again. I mean, read verse 20 again. Romans chapter 7 verse 20. Read. Now if I do that, I would not. Mm -hmm. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. But the breaking of God's laws that is reigning over my mortal body, that when that, when that temptation comes, guess what he's saying? He says, I obey that sin in my lust. That's what he's saying. Watch this. Give me the book of James chapter 1 verse 12. James 1, verse 12. Because what you want to understand is that when, when you act upon that sin, is because you don't have it on lock yet. Because you might convince yourself that you have it on lock, but on that day when you obey it, when you obey that sin in your last, you don't have it on lock. So that means you have to do what? You have to work harder to get rid of this thing. You have to pray. You have to fast. You have to study. You have to apply until the Lord blesses you to overcome this thing. Read it. James 1 verse 12. Come on. James chapter 1 verse 12. Read. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. You see that part right there? Blessed is the man that endures temptation. What is the Lord teaching us? The Lord is teaching us that you will be tempted. Don't get it. There's no if or maybe. You will be tempted. So he says, blessed is the man that endures the temptation. So when you can endure the temptations that will come upon you, you understand, on a daily basis, some bigger than others, some harder than others, guess what? He says you are blessed if you can endure those temptations. Okay? Read again. James chapter 1 verse 12. Come on. Blessed is the man that endured temptation. Read. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Come on. Which the Lord has promised to them that love him. So now he's telling you, says, for when he is tried, because the temptations are there to do what? To try you. The temptation is there for, is, is a trial. That temptation is a trial that the Lord will allow to be sent your way. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of, um, give me that in First Peter. Okay, First Peter chapter 4, First Peter 4 verse 12. Watch this. First Peter chapter 4 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. You see what it's saying? It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Okay? As though some strange thing happened unto you. You can, Listen, one thing I can tell you is that, listen, some strange thing is going on. Okay? There are some strange things that there's some events that are happening that are taking place. You understand? You can see, hmm, there's a trial going on here. You understand? Things that are just, the, the way they happen, you can pick up like, no, I'm being tried right here. You understand? So it's a strange thing. It doesn't come straight. You understand? It comes indirectly. But he's saying, beloved, think you not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Read on. Verse 13. Watch this. 
Verse 13. Mm -hmm. But rejoice. But what? But rejoice. He says, but you must rejoice. Go ahead. Why? Read. Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings. So these trials, they, are make, they make us to be partakers of Christ's sufferings. Because Christ suffered for us. And he left us an example that we should follow his steps. If you read 1 Peter 2.21. Read. Come on. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. You see that thing? When his glory shall be revealed, when he returns, you also, he says, you what? He says, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Why? Because you, you endured until the end. Until you, until, either until you die in this truth or until the Lord returns. But either way, that's what he's saying, right? He says, you must rejoice when these trials come. Why? Because they, you become partaker of Christ's suffering. The way Christ suffered, you have to go through the trials as well. Just like he suffered, you must suffer as well. That's what he's saying right there. Go back to James now. James chapter 1, verse 12 again. James chapter 1, verse 12. Read. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Come on. Which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. The Lord hath promised to them that love him. Because if you love the Lord, 1 John chapter 5 verse 3, read that. 1 John 5 and 3. 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. Go ahead. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. And his commandments are not grievous. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 15 verse 10. He says, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Now watch this. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 15. Okay. Proverbs 15 verse 10. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 10. Read. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Read. And he that hateth the reproof shall die. You see that thing? It says his commandments are not grievous. The commandments will only be grievous to those that hate to receive correction. It says correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. What is the way? The Bible, the commandments. You understand? It says, and he that hateth reproof, he that hates correction shall die. Because you're going to die in your sins. Give me John 8, 24. John 8, verse 24. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. John chapter 8, verse 24. Read. I said therefore unto you, Come on. that ye shall die in your sins. Mm. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. You see what Christ is saying? He says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. Because if ye believe not that I am he, meaning I'm the son of God, you understand? He says, ye shall die in your sins. So that's what he's saying. Because what did Christ teach? He taught the law. You understand? He was the law. He was the word made flesh. And he walked among us. He taught us the law. He magnified the law. Give me that in Isaiah. Okay. Isaiah 42, verse 21. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Read. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Come on. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. You see that thing? He will magnify the law and make it honorable. So guess what? what, what when he says, he shall die in your sins, if you don't believe that I am he, because he's the son of God. When he came, he came to teach us the law, to magnify the law and make it honorable. You understand? So guess what? We must do the same. We must do the same as well so that we don't die in our sins. Okay? Go back to where he was at now. James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. You see that thing? Which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Remember what we read? We went to Proverbs 15 verse 10. You understand? Because it says, Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. 
Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the word, and he that hated reproof shall die. You understand? So now he says, the, he says, the, um, he says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Okay, you must endure the temptation or the trials that will come your way. As though a strange thing is happening unto you. Because for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. That's the crown of righteousness. You understand? Which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Those that keep his commandments will receive the crown of righteousness. That's what he's saying. Read on. Verse 13. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Come on. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Read. Neither tempted he any man. You see what he's saying? He says, don't say when you are tempted. He said, no, you are tempted of God. He says, I am, he says, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. You understand? Watch this. The reason why, the reason behind our temptations. Read this. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. You see what he's saying? But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Remember what we read in Romans 6 verse 12. He says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lusts thereof. So guess what? The reason why we get tempted is because of the lust that is within us. The lust that we have not gotten rid of. The lust that we have not worked on. You understand? The, the, the lusts that are dormant in our spirits. That's why we get tempted. So the temptation activates the lust that is within. You understand? And because we don't have it on lock, we always lose all the time. Read on. Verse 15. Verse 15. Then when the lust hath conceived, mm -hmm. it bringeth forth sin. You see that thing? And sin, when, when it... Hold on. When lust has taken place, it brings forth sin. Now you are breaking the laws of God now. Go ahead. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You see that thing? When sin is finished, it will bring forth death. So our job is to do what? Is to catch ourselves before we die is to make sure that we prevent that because the things that we go through on a day-to-day, -day, these are preventable things. And the way we prevent them, we do what? We apply what is written. Daily, we must exercise our spirits to make sure that we're always vibrating in the frequency of the Most High. When we do that, we are always going to see the sin or the temptation a mile out. Then we get to prepare ourselves accordingly before it hits us. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. Do not err, my beloved brethren. You see what it's saying? Do not err, meaning do not sin, my beloved brethren. Don't sin. Don't fall for the okie doke. That's what he's saying. Don't fall for it. Keep yourself away from the sin that you know that is going to destroy you, which all sin will destroy you. So he says, keep yourself clean. How do you do that? You apply what is written. You stay in the Bible. Okay. You, stay in the, you meditate upon the ordinances that are written. All right? Go back to Romans now. Chapter 7, verse 20 again. Romans chapter 7, verse 20. Romans chapter 7, verse 20. Read. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. But sin that dwelleth in you because of what? Lust. Go ahead. I find then a law, then when that when I will do good, evil is present with me. You see what he's saying? He says, I find then a law, meaning he read in the law, he found in the laws of God that when I when I would do good, meaning when I would apply the laws, evil is present with me. Because the only way to know that evil is present with you is when you apply the laws of God. Romans 7, verse 7. Give me that. Romans 7, verse 7. The only way you're gonna know if evil is present with me with you because you you need to be able to evil for you to see that evil is present with you you must know the opposite of that so once you know the opposite of that which is the law as he says you will be able to know the evil that is present and you know how to avoid it read that romans 7 verse 7 
Romans chapter 7 verse 7. Come on. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Mm -hmm. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. We? If I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. You see, he's giving an example now. The only way, he, the, how he knew what the law says about being covetous, being covetous, he said the law, he read the law. When it says, thou shalt not covet, in Exodus 20, verse 17, thou shalt not covet. So for him to know that, he would have to have learned the law so he can know, okay, now I know that this is wrong. So he's saying, I was a simp before I knew the law. Now that I know the law, I know how much of a simp I was. So now instead of me being a simp, it's time for me to be a God on earth, to be a righteous man, to submit myself to what the most High God is saying. That's what the apostle, that's what he's teaching us here. Okay, go back to Romans 7, verse 21 again. Romans chapter 7, verse 21. Come on. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Because the only way you're going to know if evil is present with you, you must be applying the laws of God. Then you're going to be able to see the evils around you. Give me that in Ezekiel 9 verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4. You're not going to see the evil if you don't apply. But when you apply God's commandments, you will definitely see the evil around you and inside of you. You understand? It's, very impo it's more importantly to see the evil inside of you so that you can be able to keep it in check. Okay? Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4. Come on. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. You see what he's saying? So now this is the Lord speaking through Ezekiel. He says, Go through the midst of the city. Go through the midst of Jerusalem, meaning where we are scattered. You understand? Right now we're in the lands of our captivity. So it was during this time of Ezekiel. He says, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So in order for the men to sigh and cry in the city, what do they need to have? That's the, the mark they need to have is what? The laws of God. In their forehead. In your forehead, is your, that's where your mind is at. That's where your, the laws of God are supposed to be at. Because when you know the laws of God, you'll be able to see, you'll be able, that's when you're going to sigh and cry. Because you see all the abominations that have been done among your brothers and sisters. But if you don't know the laws of God, you don't have the mark of the law, you will not be able to see the evils that go on. Therefore, you're not going to be able to sigh and cry. You'll be in complete agreement with the evils around you. Why? Because you're, you don't know the laws that says this is evil, that's evil, that's wrong, that's break, that's against the law. You're not going to know that if you don't know the law. That's what he's saying. Okay? Go back to Romans 7 verse 21 again. Romans chapter 7 verse 21. Come on. I find in a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Uh, give me, give me uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Because what we read in Ezekiel, right? When we read in Ezekiel and what we just read in Romans 7 verse 21, yeah, it's talking about the evils around you. But guess what? The same thought process to be able to identify the evils around you is the same process that you must be able to identify the evils within you. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Read. Examine yourselves. Do what? With the... Examine yourselves. Examine yourself. Not the next man, your own self. Examine yourself. Just as you'll be able to examine those around you, you must, be, you must examine yourself. Just as you're going to see the evils around you, you must be able to see the evils within yourself. The only way you're going to see the evil, the evil within you, you must examine yourself and be real with you. You must be real with yourself. Go ahead. Examine yourselves. Whether you be in the faith. Come on. Prove your own selves. Prove your no, own not. selves. Meaning prove your soul. When he says prove your own selves, you prove your own soul. How do you prove your own soul? You apply what is written. You prove your own soul by applying that which is written. 
Give me that. I'm going ahead with this precept. Give me Sirach 37, 27 real quick. I want to show you what I mean by that. When it says, it says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. You understand? Whether you be in the faith of Christ, prove your own selves. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 37, verse 27. It says, prove your own self. This is how you do it. Read that. Ecclesiastes 37, verse 27. Read. My son, prove thy soul in thy life mm -hmm. and see what is evil for it. Read. And give not that and give not that unto it. You see what he's saying right there? He says, prove your own soul. Prove your soul in thy life. You must prove your soul in your life. The only way you're going to prove your soul in your life, you need to use the Bible to do it. You prove your soul in your life. In the life that you are living, you must be able to prove your soul to see what is evil for your soul, what is good for your soul. And you can only know that if you examine yourself. When you examine yourself, you're going to see the evils that exist within you. And you're going to know, you're going to what? You're going to go into the scriptures to get rid of the evils that you know exist within you. And you're going to know this one, the extent of it is, this is where the extent of it. You're going to know really the percentages of it. You're going to know this one is too powerful at the moment. That one is like this. That's one, I'm, I'm, I have it on lock. That one, I don't have it on lock. You understand? It keeps coming back over and over. Therefore, I, don't not, I do not have it on lock. If it keeps coming back over and over, you don't have it on lock. So don't lie to yourself and say, no, I, you don't have it on lock. So your job is to sit down and say, you know what? This thing is too powerful right now. So what must I do? You pray, you fast, you ask for counsel and so forth. You fight, you, 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 you seek counsel so we can be able to see the things that are really become, that, the things that are a stumbling block in your walk. So we can show you, okay, bro, this is what you must do. Sis, you must do X, Y, and Z to avoid so you can overcome, okay? But you must examine yourself. Read verse, 30, verse 27 again. Ecclesiastes 37, verse 27. Read. My son, prove thy soul in thy life mm -hmm. and see what is evil for it. Go ahead. And give not that unto it. Once you see what is evil for your soul, how are you going to see it? You, Because you are in the scripts. You are examining yourself. Well, as you are examining yourself, there's going to be evils that will pop up because you examine yourself with the Bible to see the evils that is within you because you are proving your soul to see what is good and evil for it. Once you discover it, guess what you're going to do? Don't give yourself over to that because you know it's evil for your soul. But when you apply the laws of God, you know that's good for your soul. You understand? Okay, so let's go back. Is uh, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Read. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So now it says, know ye not your own selves. How are you going to know yourself? The only way for you, you're going, the only way that you're going to know yourselves is if you examine yourself and prove your soul and see what is, what is evil for it. That's how you're going to know yourself. The only way for you to properly know yourself, you must prove your soul to see what is evil for your soul and, and apply the scriptures necessary for you to make sure that the evils that you, the things that is evil for your soul, you don't, you don't surround yourself with. You understand? Okay, let's go back. Um, go back to where was that? Romans 7, verse 21 again. Romans chapter 7, verse 21. Come on. I find in a law mm -hmm. that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Evil is present with me. So that's because he was able to discover that evil. When you're in the world, you're not applying the laws of God. You don't see the evils that is around you or within you. You understand? You don't know that this is wrong. That's, you don't know. Up until you come into the scriptures to, to go into the sanctuary of the Lord, then you're going to be able to see clearly because now your eyes are opened. The Lord will open your eyes. Give me that in Psalms 119 verse 18. 
Psalms 119 verse 18. Watch this. Psalms chapter 119 verse 18. Mm -hmm. Open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You see, you see what he's saying? He says, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. The only way you're going to be able to, your eyes going to be opened. Guess what? The laws of God is what's going to open your eyes. God's commandments is going to give you sight. That's why it says restoring sight to the blind. The laws of God is what's going to do that for you. Okay? Watch this. Uh, read verse 73. Psalms 119 verse 73. Psalms 119 verse 73. Read. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. You see what he's saying? Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. You see what he's saying? So understanding you're going to get it through the commandments of the Most High. You keep God's commandments, you will receive understanding. Okay? Give me that in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Ephesians. That's why it says in Romans, because I know some of you forgot the point. It says, I find then a law. Meaning he went into the scriptures to learn about the law. He learned the law. When I would do, it says, when I would, when I would do good, evil is present with me. How did he know? The good, that, what, the, what was the good that he was doing? He was applying God's laws to his life. So therefore, he started to see the evil that was present that existed within himself. Okay, Ephesians 1. Verse 18. Read that. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Go ahead. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You see that part right there? The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. How is you, the eyes of your understanding going to be enlightened? You need God's laws. God's commandment is what's going to open your eyes. Okay? Once your eyes are opened, then how you are open your, are your spiritual eyes are open by applying the laws of God. Once you apply, your eyes are open, then you start to see the evils that exist within you and around you. Okay? Read that again, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. In the saints, meaning what? In the um, to the 12 tribes of Israel, so now give me that in uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. Revelation 3, verse 18. Watch this Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. Read, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, gold that tried thou in the fire. The gold that is tried in the fire, that's Christ. Christ is that gold that was tried in the fire. You understand? He says, I come in the volume of the book. Okay, go ahead. That thou mayest be rich. Mm. And white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. Go ahead. And that the same, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eyes of, that thou mayest see. He says, anoint thine eyes with eyes of. The eyes, what is the eyes of? A cleaning solution for your eyes. That's the Bible. You understand? The Bible is that eyes of that is going to cause you to see with your spiritual eyes. He says, anoint thyself with eyes of that thou mayest see. Because the Lord will open your eyes to see the evil that exists within you and around you. So that you can set your house, your spiritual house in order then you're going to set the spiritual, this, the house of Israel in order as well. You understand? Okay. Now go back to Romans now. Read verse 22 now. Romans 7, verse 22. Romans chapter 7, verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Okay, read verse 22 again. I'm sorry. Romans chapter 7 verse 22. Mm -hmm. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. He says, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. That inward man, give me that in Ephesians 3 verse 16. I delight 
He says, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. He says he delights in God's commandments. He rejoices in the laws of God. Watch this. Ephesians 3, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. You see what he's saying? He says to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That inner man is talk about Christ. Next verse. Read that. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Mm -hmm. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. You see that thing? You must be rooted and grounded in love for, for Christ to dwell in your heart by faith. In your mind. And guess what? Christ is that inner man. Christ is that inward man. You understand? Watch this. Go back now to the book of Romans now. Go back to Romans chapter 6. Romans 6 verse 12 again. Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the last thereof. That ye should obey your, your, your last that ye should obey that sin in the day of your last. Because why? Because of that mortal body you got. Yes, we all of got, all of us we've got we've got mortal bodies. We've got corruptible bodies. Our bodies are corruptible by what? By sin. You understand? So our job is to get the mind right first and foremost. Then the body will fall. But the mind must be gotten correct. Okay. Watch this. Go back to uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter nine, verse fifteen. Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 15. Let's go back there. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15. Mm -hmm. For the corruptible body presses down the soul, and the earthy tabernacle wears down the mind that museth upon many things. He says, the, this earthy tabernacle, this frail bodies we got, he says, is weighed down the mind that muses upon many things. Why? Because remember, in verse 14 says, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. So these miserable thoughts is the, is the thoughts, is, the, is, is in the mind that muses upon many things. We went over this before. You can just refer in the, the detailed class about that. You understand? When it says the, a wandering mind, we went over that. It says the mind that muses upon many things. Why? The mind that is music, because if your mind is musing upon many things, your body will be musing upon many lusts. You see this thing? Because your mind is all over. Your mind is not disciplined. It's not rooted and grounded in love. It's rooted and grounded in sin. And because it's rooted and grounded in sin, guess what? Your body also will muse, will lust upon anything and everything. You see that thing? You'll be tossed to and fro by the lust that exists in your body. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 9. The mind that muses upon many things will be tossed to and fro by the lusts that exist around you and the lusts that exist within you. Proverbs 24 verse 9. Read that. Proverbs 24 verse 9. Read. The thoughts of foolishness is sin. Read that again. And the scorner is an abomination. Proverbs 24 verse 9. Go ahead. The thought of foolishness is sin. Mm. And the scorner is an abomination to men. So a scorner is the one that hates God's commandments. He says the thought of foolishness is sin. Because the mind that is, that is pondering always upon sin, guess what? He says the thought of foolishness. Foolishness is breaking God's commandments. So the thoughts of sin will always land you in sin. That means you are covered with sin. You are laden with iniquity. You understand? Watch this. Ephesians 4.14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Come on. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men. That's and light. cunning... 
the slight, meaning the slight, meaning the trickery of men. Go ahead. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. They lie in wait to deceive, meaning they are waiting to deceive you. It says that we no more, it says, thenceforth, we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. So guess what? If your mind, your mind muses upon many things, you are going to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And guess what? Because your body follows your mind, your body will be musing upon many things, lasting upon many things, and it will what? It will act upon those lusts. Because your mind is all over, so will your body will be follow. Wherever your mind goes, your body will go there. You understand? You are going to be tossed to and fro because of this mind that muses upon many things. Give me Sarah 33 verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 5. Read. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel mm -hmm. and his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. You see what he's saying? He says the heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel. You ever seen the carts, the cars that be carrying, that be pulled by donkeys, a cart that is pulled by, by horses and all of that, or by cows? It says the heart of the foolish is like a cart wheel, is the wheels of a cart. I guess they keep rolling, they keep rolling. That's how the mind of the foolish men and women is. It says, and his thoughts are like a rolling Excel tree. That Excel tree is the bar that goes across to what? To hold the, the cart wheels. You understand? That bar that goes across to hold the cartwheels, the mind, he says, the mind of the foolish is like that. The mind that muses upon many things is always rolling all the time. Guess what? The body also will be doing the same because the body follows that. So that's why you mean to tell me the body is not going to be sick? The body will be sick. You understand? You're going to get sick. You're going to get sick because guess what? Your mind is all over. The mind is not rooted and it's not focused. You have one thought, stick to the thought and keep it more and apply it. Follow instruction exactly to the T. But if you don't follow that instruction to the T, guess what's going to happen? You will be like that cartwheel. You will be that lat rolling axle tree. That's what's going to happen. That's what the Lord is teaching us right here. Okay, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 15. Go ahead. For the corruptible body presses down the soul, and the earthy tabernacle weighs down the mind that museth upon many things. He says, the earthy tabernacle weighs down the mind that museth upon many things. The mind is always wandering, is all over the place. You understand? It's all over the place. That's why, that's why it's so easy to fall into sin. Why? Because the mind is not rooted and grounded. The mind, the mind is unstable. The mind is not is, is unstable. You understand? Watch this. Um, now watch this. You see, you see, when you look at what we just read in Wisdom of Solomon 9, 14 and 15, in the first place, we're not supposed to be dying. You understand? The reason why we are dying is because of the last that are in our members, like it says in James 4. The last that war in our members is the reason why today now we have these mortal bodies we got. You understand? These earthy tabernacle. You understand? So we need the laws of God to get the mind right so the body can follow. So when the Lord returns, can give us those new bodies with a new mind. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis. Okay? Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. Genesis 3 verse 22. Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Read. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So now we see what we're reading. It says, the, this, one, this is after Adam and Eve has sinned. It says, Now man 
is like one is become like one of us to know good and evil. Now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. He says, guess what? He's going to want to get himself correct. I don't want that. That's what the Lord is saying. It says, and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. I don't want him to live because when we was given the laws of God from the time of Genesis 2 verse 7, Adam was given the commandments to teach everyone else. When Give me that in 2 Ezra 3 verse 21. You understand? Because when we was given those laws from the time of Adam, it was so that we can live forever. Okay? But this is what happened now. So that now we have now we have these mortal bodies, the honor, the, the minds that is muse, the, the mind that is musing upon many things. This is because of this happened. Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 21. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 21. Read. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed Come and on. was overcome. Mm. And so be all they that were, that are born of him. You see what he's saying? He says, for the first Adam bearing a wicked heart, he transgressed. Because in Genesis 2 verse 7, he was given the commandments. Second Ezra 3 verse 20 is telling you, he transgressed. Genesis 3 22 is, is talking about what? The transgression of that law that was given so that we can live forever. It says, and was overcome. And so be, so be all they that are born of him, the direct descendants of Adam. You understand? Now we follow the same fate. Okay? Go back to Genesis 3. Verse 22 again. Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Jump down to verse 24. Verse 24. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. You see that thing? So these cherubims were the flaming sword. These are these are spirit, these are angels that the Lord has put up to make sure to block that understanding from us. You understand? We stand every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Give me that in Sirach 19 verse 19. To keep the way of the tree of life. Because that tree of life, that's the tree of immortality. You understand? When we broke the commandments, we lost it. Now we have to work for it now. With sweat and with blood. Sirach 19 verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 19. Verse 19. Read. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do the things, and they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. The fruit of the tree of immortality, meaning everlasting life. The fruit of the tree of immortality, that's everlasting life. Revelation 22 verse 14. Because this is what's supposed to have happened from the beginning. It did, but up to a point. Now, we don't even get to 120 years anymore now. Okay? Because of that sin that was committed. Revelation 22, verse 14. Read that. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, mm. and may enter in through the gates into the city. So the tree of life is what? It's talking about the kingdom of heaven, everlasting life. The tree of life is everlasting life. The fruit of the tree of immortality, everlasting life. But we did not get that, you know, after the transgression, like we read in Genesis 3, like we read in 2nd Ezra 3. Give me that in Genesis 6 verse 3. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. Come on. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not, al shall, shall not always strive with man, for that, he is, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. 
You see what he's saying? He says, my spirit shall not always strive with men, with men, with men. This is talking about the sons of God. For it says, for that he also is flesh. He's sinful. That's the same thing we was reading in Romans, what we read in uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Okay. He says, yet his days shall be in 120 years. We don't even, we don't even get to that number. Okay. Jump down to verse 5. Read verse 5 now. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. Mm -hmm. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Great. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You see that thing? So now because of, our, because of sin, the Lord cut our lifespan. You understand? To be up to 120. We don't even get to 120. So because of sin, now we have these corruptible bodies now. We have these mortal bodies. We have these earthy tabernacles that are weak. Okay? To sin. Verse 7. Watch this. Verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Read. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. You see, the Lord, he says, I regret that I made these things. Why? Because now they are corrupt, you understand? And now they are corrupt, they, were cor they are corrupt and corruptible. So now I'm going to destroy them now because of this. Okay, give me that in 2nd Ezra 7 verse 13. 2nd Ezra chapter 7 and verse 13. Because that, was, that which was given to us back then during the time of Aram in Genesis 2 verse 7 down, guess what? We was given eternal life. Okay, we, dis we messed that up. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 13. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 13. Mm -hmm. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruits. And brought immortal fruit. Because what we read in Genesis 6 verse 3, he didn't say immortal. You understand? He says mortal. It was mortal. Why am I saying that? Because it says... I'm going to limit your lifespan to 120 years. It was no longer immortal. It is now mortal. Read that again. Verse 13. Second Ezra chapter 7 verse 13. Read. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. They were wide and they were sure and brought immortal fruit. Okay. Second Ezra 2 verse 45. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 45. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 45. He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing. The mortal clothing, and the mortal clothing is our bodies. The frail and weak bodies that we have, these are our mortal bodies. Go ahead. Mortal clothing. Read. And put on the immortal. Mm -hmm. And have confessed the name of God. Now are they crowned. And receive palms. That's when the Lord returns. When the Lord returns. We're going to put off these mortal clothing. Or these mortal bodies that we got. And we're going to put on the immortal bodies. You understand? Watch this. Give me Isaiah 25 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 25 verse 8. I'm showing you what we used to have. And what we now have, which is the reason why sin is ruling over our mortal bodies, because we obey our bodies now during the day of our sins or on our day of our lusts. You understand? Read that. Isaiah 25 is 8. Isaiah 25 is 8. Read. He will swallow up death in victory. You will what? And the Lord God will. He will swallow up death in victory. He will swallow up death in victory. That's when the Lord returns when he gives us those God-level bodies. Go ahead. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from of all faces. All, and, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from of all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. That's when the Lord returns. Because the Lord has promised us, listen... I'm going to what? Death is going to be swallowed up in victory. You understand? That's when the Lord is really going to show us the promises that he's 
that are written. That's when these things are going to be fulfilled. Watched, but in their proper order and season. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 51. Because what Isaiah is saying is what the Apostle Paul, he gets it from here. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. The Apostle Paul is going to go into more detail about this thing. Read that. 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 51. Read. Behold, I show you a mystery. Mm -hmm. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. You see what he's saying? He says, we shall not all sleep. Not all of us are going to die in this, in this truth. Meaning what? We're going to live to see the Lord return and be delivered. He says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed on that day. Okay, read on. In a moment, mm. in, the twinkling, in the twinkling of an eye, Go ahead. at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. You see what he's saying? He says, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So that's what he's saying right there. He's repeating the same thing that he just said in verse 51. It says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the twinkling of an eye, in the blink of an eye, the Lord will give us those bodies that we used to have back then. Those immortal trees going to give us immortal clothing. You understand? Read. Verse 53. For this corruptible must be put, must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So our corruptible body, you, understand? you see what happens? Our corruptible body puts on corruption. That's why in Wisdom of Solomon it says for the corruptible body. The corruptible body will attract, will put on or attract in corruption, which is what? Sin. We are easily corrupted by sin, diseases, you understand? All kinds of issues. Read. So when this corruptible shall have put on in corruption. So and now this hold on. Wait. He says, so when this corruptible shall put on in corruption. That's when it says we shall all be changed. That's when that will happen. Read. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. That's what we read in Isaiah 25 verse 8. Death is swallowed up in victory. Because no more death. We live forever. The tree of immortality like we read in Sirach. Read. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? You see that thing? Because on that day, death, we will have what? We will have overcome death. Because that's what Christ did. He rose the third day. They saw him hanging on the cross for six hours. And he was dead and he was buried. And three days he rose again. Guess what? He, he what? He, he, give me that in Revelation. Hmm, let me not butcher it. Give me Revelation chapter 2. Okay, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20. Watch this. You know what? Let me see, because now my Bible, I can't see nothing. Let me open it on my phone. Mm. No, Revel not, not Revelation 2, Revelation 1. Let me see. Yes, give me Revelation 1 verse 18. Then we're going to read down. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. Mm. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Stop right Amen. there. I am, hold on. I am what? I am alive forevermore. You see what he's saying? That's some heavy stuff right there. He says, I am he that liveth and was dead. Yes, he died. Three days later, he was risen. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Meaning I'm not going to die. I'm going to live forever. Amen. Read on. And have the keys of hell and of death. He says, I have the keys of hell and of death. Guess what? He died. He rose up. He, listen, he defeated death. You have to understand. Listen, that's some heavy stuff. When Christ walked the earth, what he did for him to, to rise from the dead, 
That was some heavy stuff right there. He rose the third day. We are rising the third day. And he's saying, I am alive. And he says, I am alive forevermore. He's I'm going to live forever. Just like you're going to live forever. Just endure until the end. Because he endured the cross. We must endure our crosses that we must carry until he returns so we, we also can live forever. You see that thing? Read again verse 18. I didn't want to go into this, but small tangent. Read it. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. Go ahead. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. He says, I have the keys of hell and of death. He's got the keys. You understand? You see that movie, The Matrix, when Agent Smith was talking to that traitor I forgot his name. And Agent Smith, uh, based on what that traitor was saying, because that's what Judas, I'll call him Judas Iscariot. Okay. When Judas Iscariot was talking to Agent Smith in the Matrix, he he all he, he wanted, he just wanted fame. He wanted to be famous and all of that. And he said, Okay, as you wish, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. That's the same thing that Christ, that the devil was saying to Christ. Whatever you, all these great kingdoms. I'm going to give them to you if you fall down and worship me. He said, listen, Morpheus, give me Morpheus. Okay. He said, listen, I don't know where he is, but I can get you to him. Then he says something else. He says, give me access. He says, give me access codes to the Zion mainframe. Access codes to the Zion mainframe. The keys to hell and back. To hell and of death. He says, I have the keys of hell and of death. He wanted access codes to the Zion mainframe. The access codes to the Zion mainframe, well, guess what that is? God's commandments. The access keys to the, the, the Bible, the Bible. This is the Zion mainframe right here. <laughs> okay? You're just thinking of a supercomputer. No. This is the supercomputer. You understand? This is the Zion mainframe right here, the Bible. The Bible is the Zion mainframe. To get access to the Zion mainframe, you need to keep the laws of the Mosai. Period. Heavy stuff right there. Some heavy stuff. Okay. Um, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 56 now. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. Read. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. He says the sting of death is sin. Meaning what? The sting of death is sin. So sin is what brings death into the world. Watch this. Give me Romans 6.23. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Read. For the wages of sin is death. You see that thing? The wages of sin is death. So what brings forth death is when you break the laws of God. Same thing we read in the book of James. 1 verse 14 down. You understand? When sin has conceived, bringeth forth death. Saying the same thing. Go back to 1 Corinthians now. 15 verse 56. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 56. Go ahead. The sting of death is sin. Mm -hmm. And the strength of sin is the law. The strength of sin is the law. So guess what? In order for you to overcome sin, you must keep the law. That's what he's saying right there. That's why I said the apostle Paul, he wrote things hard to be understood. Watch this. Now go back to Romans now. Romans 6 verse 23. I mean Romans 6 verse 12. Let's go back to Romans because I have not forgotten my point. I was still dealing with the part where it says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Okay. And I gave you examples when, when we allowed sin to reign in our mortal bodies, the Lord says, okay, 120. But when we did not do that, the Lord gave us what? Immortal life. Okay, read that. Romans 6 verse 12. Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Go ahead. That ye should obey it in the last thereof. 
That's the point. That's the point I want to deal with now. It says that ye should obey it in the last thereof. Now jump down to verse 16. Okay, this is how you this is what it means when it says that you should obey it in the last thereof. This is how you obey that sin in the day of your last. Okay, watch this. Verse 16, 1 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So you see what he's saying? So he's saying, listen, you, he says, no. He says, understand this. Meaning open your ears and listen and understand what he's saying. It says, whoever you yield yourself to be a servant to obey, guess what? His servants he are to whom you obey. So now he's giving an analogy. The same way a servant must submit to the master, guess what? As you submit yourself to your master, you, when you, you are in the midst of sin, you obey your sin in the day of your last, you are a servant to that sin now. That's what he's saying. Okay, it says, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So if you obey to righteousness, you will serve righteousness. You obey sin, you will serve sin. You will die in your sin if you don't repent from that sin. That's what he's saying right there. Jump down to verse 19. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. I speak after the men of men. Because of the infirmity of your flesh. You see what he's saying? So now he's saying, he said that I'm speaking like this. I'm speaking regarding those men and women. He says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Meaning the weakness of your flesh. Because the flesh is weak. The corruptible bodies we got, okay, they are weak. That's why now the mind must, the software must start to, the Lord is reviving the software now. You understand the brain, the mind, and the mindset. Read that part again, verse 19. Romans chapter 6, verse 19. Read. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. The weakness of your flesh. Read. For as ye have yielded your members, your members servants of uncleanness. You see that and thing? To no, no, servants too uncleanness so what we read in verse 16 he's making it plain in verse 19 he says now now i'm going to make it plain i speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh meaning the weakness of your flesh for as he have yielded your members servants to uncleanness meaning what you have given your bodies to be a servant to unclean spirits okay read on and to what and to iniquity. And to iniquity, meaning sin, read. And to iniquity. Meaning sin unto sin. Because the more you start to break the laws of God, you're going to find yourself, now one sin is piling on top of another. Okay? So now you, you, you start to become overwhelmed by the sins you are in. So he's saying, the same way a servant will yield himself to a master, you understand? You, when you break God's commandments, you are yielding yourself to what? You become a servant of uncleanness. Because any, any law that is broken, that's uncleanness. So you will become a servant, servant to uncleanness and to sin is, and to iniquity and to iniquity. One sin upon another. Even so now, yield your members servants to righteousness and to holiness. You see that thing? So he said, likewise, the same way we was yielding ourselves uh, servants to uncleanness, likewise, we must yield ourselves members to servants, I mean, I mean, members servants to righteousness and to holiness. Now he says, let go of that evil, follow holiness now, follow righteousness, keep God's commandments, pray and apply. That's what he's saying right there. Read that again, read verse 19 in, in its entirety. Romans chapter 6 verse 19. Mm -hmm. I speak of the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Read. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and mm -hmm. to iniquity and to iniquity. Come on. Even so, now yield your members servants to righteousness and to holiness. 
Next verse. Go ahead. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. You see what he's saying? When ye were servants, he says, when ye were servants, when ye were the servants of sin, meaning what? You were a slave to that uncleanness. You were free from righteousness because you can't serve two masters. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Um, go back to Romans now. 6 verse 13 now. Romans 6 verse 13. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Read. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. You see what he's saying? He says, don't, he says, neither. He's continuing the thought. He has not forgotten the thought. We're keeping it in his cultural, cultural context here. He says, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. That's the part I want to deal with. Because he's continuing the thought. How do you make sure that you don't give yourself over? You understand? To what? To righteousness and to, to unrighteousness and to sin. How do you keep yourself from your own sins? How do you keep yourself from your own iniquities? How do you make sure that you don't be corrupted by the lusts and the, the sins that are within you? How do you do that? Give me that in 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. Let's start at verse 2. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 2. Read. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. So now, which means the Apostle Paul is telling us that the commandments that he was, he was him and the, the other apostles that was teaching, he was giving us the commandments by the Lord Jesus. You understand? Read. Verse 3. For this is the will of God, mm -hmm. even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That's how you make sure that you don't yield your members as instruments and of unrighteousness unto sin. You, it says what? You must abstain from fornication. You must sanctify yourself and abstain from fornication. Sexual sins. Okay? Read. For, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. He says that every one of you should know. How, do, how are we going to know? Because we study. The scriptures tell us, thou shalt not commit adultery. That's fornication. All the, fornic the sins regarding fornication, they fall under that law. Exodus chapter 20 verse 14. You understand? They fall under that law. So when it says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, because you know the law that says thou shalt not commit adultery. God is just giving an example here of, of the sin that you must not yield yourself to. I'm just giving an example of fornication. Read. Not in the lust of concupiscence, mm -hmm. even as the Gentiles which know not God. He says, do not yield your members, you understand, as instruments of unrighteousness, not in the lust of concupiscence, evil sexual desires and lusts, even as the Gentiles which know not God, meaning don't keep the commandments. So this is twofold. He's talking about the other nations and he's talking about northern kingdom that went into idolatry. Okay, watch this. Now jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. You see what he's saying? He says, God did not call us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. The Lord didn't call us unto uncleanness. Okay? When we deal with sin, it's uncleanness, period. The laws of God is what make us holy, is what, may, is what cleanses us. You understand? When we dabbling in sin, we are in the midst of uncleanness. We are saving those unclean demons. Okay? Watch this. Give me, um, we read it earlier, but I just want to touch it again. Now that you are fully aware, okay? Now that you know that you are not supposed to, um, you're supposed to yield your members as instruments, you're not supposed to yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Guess what you must do? Give me that in, uh, go back to Ecclesiasticus, okay? Sirach 37. Sirach 37 and verse, you know what? Hmm. 
Let me see if I want to go there. Give me a second as verse 16. It's not in my notes, but I think I'll use this one. I'll come back to that one. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 67. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 67. Go ahead. Behold, God himself is the judge. Mm -hmm. Fear him. Live off from your sins. Live off forget. from your Hold on. Live off from your sins. Plural. Live off from your sins because we have sins that we are dealing with. Okay, go ahead. And forget your iniquities. Forget your iniquities, meaning what? When he says forget, meaning your mind must not be now on those sins or those uncleanness that the uncleanness that you used to be in. So you because in order for you to make sure that your mind is not on that, remember it says the thought of foolishness is sin, the mind that muses upon many things. So when it says live off from your sins and forget your iniquities. To forget, where does that take place? In your mind. So which means that in order for you to forget, you must replace it with something else. The laws of God is what must supposed to replace your iniquities that you used to indulge in. The sins that you used to indulge in, guess what? The laws of God must replace that. That's how you forget. You understand? Read that again, verse 67. Second is chapter 16, verse 67. Behold, God Himself is the judge. Fear Him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities. Go ahead. To meddle no more with them forever. You see that part? Right so there? shall God. Hold on. To meddle no more with them forever. Don't meddle. He says, Leave off from your sins. Forget your iniquities. Don't meddle no more with them. Don't meddle. Meaning, don't play with them. You understand? Don't meddle with them. Read. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. The Lord will deliver you from that trouble, meaning from those sins, from those temptations, the Lord will surely deliver you. Okay? But in order for you to do this, you need to do what? Give me that. Go back. Now go to Sirach 37 now. Sirach 37, verse 27 again. Sirach 37, verse 27. Ecclesiastes 37, verse 27. My son, prove thy soul in thy life and see what is evil for it mm -hmm. and give not that unto it. He says, prove your soul in your life. Examine yourself. Once you examine yourself, you're going to prove your soul. How? By discovering what is good and or what is evil for it. And you're going to choose what is good and reject what is evil for your soul. Next verse. For all things are not profitable for all men. Mm -hmm. Neither has every soul pleasure in everything. You see that thing? It says, for all things are not profitable for all men. Neither have every soul pleasure in everything. Meaning what? You might be dealing with pornography. That's your, that's your demon that keeps coming back over and over. The other brother is dealing with uh, bearing false witness. That's his demon. It keeps coming back over. And he always finds himself in that situation. So on and so forth. Meaning, so not everybody is going to deal with the same thing. It doesn't mean that we, we're not going to deal with similar things. Yeah, we will. But there are some sins that are different from others based on the individual, based on the demon that has jumped on them. You understand? Or the demon that they have been dealing with in the world. And there's, is, in the truth, in the beginning, it seemed like, you know, you know I, can, I, can, I have this on lock, it's easy. But as time goes, the, 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 the path is getting narrower and narrower. The cross is getting heavier and heavier. Why? Because that's, that's, that's the nature of the beast. You understand? That's the condition of the battle. Let me say that. Okay, so that's why it says, for all things are not profitable for all men. Neither have every soul pleasure in everything. So whatever, whatever pleasures that you have, those, you know, these, these, are the, these are the things that I indulge in and they are not good for my soul. For the next, for the sister, another sister, some say, another sister will say, me, I struggle with such and such. Another one will say, me, I struggle with this thing. 
You understand? The the things that your 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 your, your, your the lusts will be different, but you must prove your soul. You understand to see what is evil for it. Okay, watch this. Give me Sirach 18 verse 30. Ecclesiastes chapter 18. To make sure that you don't go after them things. Ecclesiastes chapter 18 verse 30. Read. Go not after thy lusts, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. That's the same. Do you see the appetites, the pleasures that we read in Sirach? 37 verse 28. So it says, go not after thy lust. Remember, go back to Romans 6 verse 12 again. So we don't lose the thought. Romans 6 verse 12. Go back there. Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Read. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Mm -hmm. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. That ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So go back to Sarag 18, verse 30 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 30. Read. Go not after thy lust, mm -hmm. but refrain thyself from thine appetites. But refrain thyself from thine appetite. So don't go after your lust. That's why it says that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Obeying sin, obeying that sin in the day of your lust. Because that's your appetite. Those are the pleasures that we read in Sirach 37, 28. You understand? So these appetites, these are the pleasures. The, this is refrain thyself, meaning abstain. Abstain from the sins that you know they are evil for your soul. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 31. Sirach 18, verse 31. Ecclesiastes 18, verse 31. Mm -hmm. If thou givest thy soul the desires that please her, she will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee. So now it says, if thou givest thy soul the desires that please her. If you give your soul the desires that please her, the she is wisdom. It says, she, wisdom will make you a laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee. Meaning your enemies that want you to fall. Your enemies that want you to see you destroyed. He says, wisdom will make you a laughing stock if you give your soul the desires that please her. So don't give your soul. That's why it says, know what is evil for your soul and don't give that to your soul that pleases it. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Romans 6 verse 13 again. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Read. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Stop. He says, but, neither yield ye, he says, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Don't yield your members, don't yield your body. You understand? To unrighteous, to instrument as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. That's the same thing that we're reading in Sirach. Go, don't go after your lusts, but refrain. That word refrain, go back to 1 Thessalonians 4, verse, verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Because there's a word that the Apostle Paul is using, which is in line with what we're reading here, what Sirach is saying. Okay, read that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication. That ye should what? That ye should abstain from fornication. That you must abstain from fornication. Abstain. Abstain. Go back to Sirach 18 verse 30 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 18 verse 30. Go not after thy lusts, Mm -hmm. But refrain thyself from thine appetite. You see that thing? Go not after your lust, but abstain. That word refrain means abstain. But refrain or abstain yourself from your iniquity, from your appetites. You understand? Your appetite might not be the same. The, your, the appetite that one brother has is not the same appetite that the next brother has or the next sister has. Everybody has different appetites. The Lord is saying, refrain yourself from your appetites. 
The things that you know they are evil for your soul, he says, abstain from them. Refrain yourself from those things. Give me that in uh, Psalms chapter 18, verse 23. The book of Psalms 18, verse 23. Psalms chapter 18, verse 23. Read. I was also upright before him. Mm -hmm. I kept myself from my iniquity. You see what King David said? He's not saying I was not dealing with sin. He's not saying that. He says, but I kept myself from my iniquities. Was he overcome by sin? Yes. Was many of our forefathers overcome by sin? Yes. But guess what? They, over, they, what? they fought and they overcame. You understand? So King David is saying, I was also upright before him and I kept myself from my iniquity. Yes, I was dealing with sin, but I overcame. You understand? I kept myself from my iniquities. No, he learned how to control himself. He learned how to abstain. He learned how to refrain. He learned not to go after his lusts. You understand? He learned that. That's why he, was, he could confidently say what he's saying here in the spirit of Christ. Okay? Watch this. Give me, go back to Romans 6. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Read. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, mm -hmm. but yield yourselves unto God. Read. As those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now that's heavy right there. He says, but you must yield yourself unto God. Now instead of yielding yourself to sin, now he says, yield yourself unto God. You give yourself up to the Lord, 100%. Give your whole self, your mind, your soul, your body. Give it to the Most High God. You understand? But yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead. Because we was dead in the world before. Now the Lord brought us back. He woke us up in the spirit of his son, the Christ. Now we are alive from the dead. You understand? And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now we must, the most High God must use our bodies as vessels of righteousness. You understand? Not vessels of unrighteousness. To keep our bodies holy and clean. So that we can present ourselves as a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable. Okay? Watch this. Okay, read that. Colossians 3 verse 1. Come on. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Read. If ye then be risen with Christ, Mm -hmm. Seek those things which are above. Come on. Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So now what you want to notice here, the Apostle Paul is saying something similar to what we just said in what we read in Romans 6. He says, if ye then be risen with Christ. Remember it says, as those that are alive from the dead. Okay. He says, if ye be risen with Christ, because we was dead, now we are alive. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Those things that are above, those are the things that we must seek for. Those are the things that we must yield ourselves to. Watch this. Give me uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 4. He says, we must seek those things which are above. Now that we are risen, you understand, we be risen with Christ, alive from the dead. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 4. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 4. Come on. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne, mm -hmm. and reject me not from among thy children. Okay, put some power in this. Come on, I need you to read like you are alive. Come on, bro. Read verse 9, verse 4 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy, right, by thy throne, and reject me not from thy children. So he says, give me children. wisdom, give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne and reject me not from among thy children. So now the things which are above is wisdom. The things that we must seek in Colossians 3 verse 1, seek those things which are above is the wisdom of the Most High that sit by his throne. Watch this. Jump down to verse 9 now. Verse 9. And wisdom was with thee. Mm -hmm. which knoweth thy works, Go ahead. and was present when thou madest the world. 
read and knew what was acceptable in thy sight and right in thy commandments. So the things that we must seek which are above is wisdom. You understand? Wisdom is what's going to teach us. He's going to teach us to know what is acceptable in the sight of the Mosai. That's what wisdom will teach us. Those are the things that we must seek now that we are alive from the dead. If we be risen with Christ. Next verse. Go ahead. The sin. Oh, send her out of thy holy heavens. Mm -hmm. And from the throne of thy glory. You see that, that thing? being present. He says, oh, send her out of thy holy heavens. That's why we read in Colossians. It says, seek those things which are above. What is that? The laws of the Most High. Wisdom of the Most High God. Read verse 10 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 10. Go ahead. O send her out of thy holy heavens and from the throne of thy glory, that being present, she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. That I may know what is pleasing to thee. That I may know what is pleasing unto thee. Watch this. Go back to Colossians now. Colossians chapter 3. You know what? Before you get me there, before you go back to Colossians, give me James, okay? James chapter 3 verse 17. This is how you make sure that that sin, keep, that the sin that keeps bothering you keeps coming back over and over. This is what you must do. Set your affection on the things that are above. Your affection, the things you love, must be upon the things that are above. James chapter 3 verse 17. James chapter 3 verse 17. Read. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, mm. then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. You see that thing? So that's what is that's what he's talking about when he says, seek those things which are above the wisdom of the most high. He says, wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Next verse. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. You see that thing? The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Watch this. Um, give me the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Because what we read, you remember what the, what the scripture says? The scripture says, set your affection on things that are above. Before you get me, Joshua, give me Proverbs 7. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. He says, set your affection on things that are above. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. Mm -hmm. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. You see what's supposed to be your, what you, your affection? Your affection is supposed to be the laws of God. And my law as the apple of thine eye. That's your affection. You understand? Now, we're not going to go to Joshua. Now give me, go back to Colossians 3. Colossians 3 verse 1 again. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Read. Right. If ye then be risen with Christ... Mm -hmm. Seek those things which are above. Come on. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Come on. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. You see what he's saying? Set your affection on things above. We know what is above. Wisdom that sitteth by the throne of the majesty on high. You understand? The spirit of Christ, the spirit of wisdom. It, say, it says, set your things on things that are above. Not on things on the earth. Because of what? The things that are upon the earth is what? The evil stuff. The fornications, the lusts, the, the deceit, the malice, the bitterness, whatever, whatever. All things evil, they are upon this earth. The earth rejoices. The, the people upon this earth, that's, that's where, the, that's where the, their affection is. Their affection is not upon the things that are above. Their affections are upon the things that are upon this earth. They don't care about the Bible. You understand? Watch this. Um, give me, give me the book. Um, give me the book of Luke. Okay. Because this is what you now know. You know that if you keep the commandments of the Most High, you set your affection on things that are above. You don't go after your lust. You are preventing what? You don't, 
yield yourself to, to your, you don't yield your body as an instrument of uncleanness. You don't serve the, the demon, the, the unclean demons. You don't serve those. The way you do it, you keep yourself from your iniquities, okay? Your affection, the things you love must be what? What is written in the scripts, the laws of God. You must love the most high, okay? Luke chapter four, verse one. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Read. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Go ahead. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he, he afterward hungered. So now Christ was tempted because what was he doing? It says, being 40 days tempted of the devil in those days. He did eat nothing. He was fasting. The devil came. He tempted Christ. Now watch this. Um, the devil comes. Will, the devil will tempt you. You understand? He will do that. The Lord doesn't tempt you. The devil does. Now watch this. Um, keep going. Verse 3. Verse 3. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, Command the stone that it be made bread. You see what he's doing? He's tempting, he's testing him. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. And Jesus answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. But by, by, but by every word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So when Christ was fasting for those 40 days, 40 nights, yes, he was feeding his spirit. He was feeding his soul. That's what he was doing. He was not feeding his flesh, but feeding his spirit. Because he needed to feed his spirit because of the trial that was coming before, that was before him. Meaning what? To die for the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? And remember, he saw it all. He saw how he was going to die, how he was going to be crucified, the level of pain that he was going to go through for the 12 tribes of Israel, and he must enjoy it. He saw it all. That's why he did this. To prepare for the child that's coming. You understand? This is heavy stuff right here. Okay? Next verse. Read. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. In the blink of an eye. So this is the temptation now. Power and the glory of kingdoms. Read. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and whomsoever I will give it and to whomsoever I will give it so it says I've got the power and I'm, I will deliver I'll deliver this power to whomsoever I will but there's one condition read if thou therefore wilt worship me all shall be thine you see that thing? This is the stipulation. If you worship me, I'm going to give you all the kingdoms and the glory of them. So what was Christ doing? Christ was rightly dividing the word precept upon precept to make sure that he does not go out. The devil is not going to trick him in any way, but he was tempted by the devil. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 31. You know what? Jump down to verse 13. Before we get to 1 Corinthians, jump down to verse 13. Luke 4, verse 13. Luke chapter 4, verse 13. Read. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for, for a season. You see that part right there? He says, when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. It was only for a season. What is he telling you? I'm going to be back. So while the devil is gone, there's no temptation. Your job is to prepare yourself for the next fight. That's the job. Because it's letting you know right there, I'm going to return. So when this sin that keeps coming back over and over is because when the devil leaves, you don't prepare yourself for the next fight. So when he comes, he always knocks you out all the time. So we must what? In order for us to see it coming, we must meditate on the laws of God. We have to. It's not a, it's not a suggestion. We must meditate. 
Because our forefathers meditated upon the laws of God. Okay, give me that in Genesis 24. We must meditate on God's laws so that our mind don't muse upon many things. The reason why we always get knocked out, out of the ring in the first round is because we are not meditating on God's commandments. Give me, give me Genesis 24 and verse 63. Genesis 24, 63. Genesis 24, verse 63. Mm -hmm. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the at at the even tide. In the evening, read. Right? And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. So our forefather Isaac, he went into the field. You understand? When the sun is about to go down and all of that. Yeah, so at that point, he went to meditate. Just to be alone with his thoughts in the presence of the Most High. He meditated on God's commandments. He meditated on God's laws. You understand? Why? So that he, his mind can muse upon God's laws. You understand? So that's why it's to set your affection on things that are above. That's why alone time is needed. You need that alone time when there's no quiet, everybody's quiet. You understand? When there's no noise, you meditate on God's commandment. Why? Because you want to, you're preparing your soul for temptation. Because you know the temptation is seasonal. Every season the, the devil will come and will tempt you, will come with something different. Don't always be expecting, or no, he's, he's going to, he's going to, no, no, no. He will come with something different. Okay, but it's always related. But he always comes with something different. So meditation is key. Okay, you must meditate. So you, your mind can be filled with that. Your mind, so you can replace the old evil and wicked thoughts. You replace them with God's laws. Because you meditate upon the laws of God. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. Come on. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I die daily. You see what the Apostle Paul is saying? He says, I protest by your rejoicing. So how do we protest? We go out to the streets and teach. That's our form of protest. You understand? What is another form of protesting? We keep the commandments. Because we're going against everything, every lie that has been pushed in the earth. When we keep God's commandments, that's a form of protest. Righteous protest. Okay? We are protesting righteously. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus. The G Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. So every day, you must keep killing that old man. Keep killing that old woman. You understand? So that the new man, that inner man, which is the spirit of Christ, can come out. You understand? And be the dominant uh, that be they be the dominant force in your life. You understand? And that takes work. That doesn't land on your lap. That takes work. It takes experience, takes time, takes application, trial and error until you get it right. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians now. Give me Ephesians. Mm, no. Give me 2 Corinthians 12 verse 7. Let's read that real quick. 2 Corinthians 12. We'll go to Ephesians in a second. Second Corinthians 12 and verse 7. Because the Apostle Paul, he also was dealing with something that, you know, he didn't go away. Okay? He was dealing with it. You understand? He begged the Lord three times for this thing. The Lord said, no, 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 no. Watch this. Second Corinthians 12 verse 7. Second Corinthians 12 verse 7. Mm-hmm. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, mm -hmm. the messenger of Satan, to perfect me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So now, the reason why the Lord did this thing, it doesn't mean the Apostle Paul didn't overcome this thing. No, but it was just, it was, it was that thorn in the flesh that was difficult to just overcome it like that, like boom. You know, meaning it was hard to get rid of. But he did get rid of it, but it was hard to get rid of it. So here he's saying, the reason why there, there was a thorn in his flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, meaning what? To keep me, to keep me in check. You understand? That's what he's saying. 
the law is do the lord is doing this to humble us because if we can just overcome all the sins like this guess what we going to think we are we going to be we going to want to be exalted above measure you understand we going to develop the spirit of what we going to be arrogant we not going to we going to think that we not going to be nothing is going to overcome us so the lord said no no i'm not doing that i'm going to i'm going to let i'm going to allow that one thing to be the one that you you going to what you going to struggle with why so that you can show yourself worthy you can prove yourself on a daily basis knowing that there's this one thing that man i can't get rid of this thing to do what to buffet you to humble you okay to keep your spirit in check next verse we say for this thing i besought the lord thrice mm. that it might depart from me you see that thing it says i besought i begged the lord three times that this thing might depart from me but watch this next verse go ahead and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness read most gladly therefore will i wear the glory in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me you see what he's saying he says my grace is sufficient for thee my strength is made perfect in weakness he says the grace that i've given you is enough for you to to work on yourself you understand to keep the spirit in to keep that demon in check the demon when, and when he, the demon returns it always comes back 10 times harder why to keep you to keep you in check so that you know that the lord is the only one that can help me get over this thing i'm not going to do it on my own the lord is the only one meaning what you must always know the lord is the one that is in control that is to keep us in check to always remember give praise to the lord always and that we know that the only way that i'm going to overcome this is 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 through the lord i'm not going to do it on my own that's what the lord wants to teach us next verse go ahead therefore i take pleasure in infirmities mm -hmm. and reproaches in necessities in persecutions in distresses for christ's sake for when i am weak then am i strong you see what he's saying it says in in i says i take pleasure in infirmities you understand in reproaches in necessities meaning one when i need things food shelter whatever in persecutions i'm going to be persecuted you understand the way our forefathers were locked in prisons they were thrown in jails and so forth in distresses for christ's sake for when i'm weak then am i strong because that weakness you being weak the lord is the one that you really have to rely on the most high because the lord know how israel is israel i mean remember if you look at gideon's army okay there were 22000 men after the lord did the filtering process how many men was left 300 because the lord says in the in the book of judges chapter 7 he says if i allow all israel this 22000 men to go out there and conquer their enemies they're not going to give glory unto me they're going to say they did this so for to, for me to prevent that i'm going to filter and i'm going to be left with 300 and i'm going to deliver these nations into your hands with the 300 men that's it now that's some heavy stuff right there okay that's some heavy heavy stuff that's a topic for another day Watch this. Um, First Corinthians, Second uh, Corinthians, eleven verse twenty-nine. Second Corinthians, eleven verse twenty-nine. Read that. Second Corinthians, at eleven verse twenty-nine. Come on. Who is weak? Am I not weak? And am I? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. Meaning what? I'm not gonna lose. I'm not gonna fall out. This truth. Read. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. You see what he's saying? He says, "I will glory of those things which concern my infirmities." Read on. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed for evermore, knoweth that I lie not. You see what he's saying? So he says, "In weakness." I am strong why because the grace of Christ 
is how I'm going to overcome. You understand? That's why Christ said, I'm not going to take it away from you. My grace is sufficient. Okay, watch this. Give me that in Ephesians 6 verse 13. We're almost done. Ephesians 6 verse 13. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. You know what? Hold on. Give me Romans chapter... Romans, Romans. Uh, Romans chapter 13 and verse... Romans 13 verse 12. Read that. Romans chapter 13 verse 12. Read. The night is far spent. The mm -hmm. day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us put on the armor of light. We cast off the works of darkness, meaning the works of sin, the works of the flesh. And what? And let us put on the armor of light. Now watch this. Ephesians 6 verse 13. This is how you put on the armor of light. Okay? You cast off the works of darkness. You put on the armor of light. Watch this. Ephesians 6 verse 13. Read that. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. You see that thing? That the he... whole armor. Hold on. The whole armor of God is the Bible. The whole armor of God is this Bible. Read. That ye may be able to withstand the evil day. In the evil day. And having done all to stand. You see what he's saying? He says, put on the whole armor, meaning the whole Bible, study. You understand? And apply that which you study. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day, in the day of your trial. And having done all to stand. Because if you have to sit down and examine yourself, be real with yourself. And say, have I done all to stand? To Have I done all to stand against this sin that I'm in? If the answer is no, you need to study. You need to demo, and the answer must always be no, because that will push you to do better. Okay, go ahead. Stand therefore, having your loins girt with the truth. With truth. No. Okay, come on, read it right. Read it right. Verse 14 again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. You see what he's saying? He says, stand therefore, having your loins get about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness, the laws of God. Read. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is the gospel of our salvation, the gospel of our deliverance from captivity. Read. Above all, Taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith. No guns, no knives, no nothing. The shield of faith. Read. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So that you can be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The trial, the temptations, the afflictions, the tricks. You understand? The snares that are laid up privily for us. You must be able to overcome with the shield of faith. Read. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. Watch this. Give me that in the book of Psalms. Okay. Psalms 160. Let me see. No, Psalms chapter 140. I believe that's what I want. Okay. Psalms chapter 140 and verse 7. Psalms 140 verse 7. Listen to what it says here. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation. Watch this. Psalms 140 verse 7. Read that. Psalms chapter 140 verse 7. Go ahead. O God the Lord, mm -hmm. the strength of my salvation. Come on. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Thou hast what? Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. The Most High God is the one that does that thing. He covers our head in the day of battle. When we put the whole armor of God, we cast off the works of darkness, we put on the armor of light, which is who? Jesus the Christ. Go back to where was that? Ephesians 6, verse 17 again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And take the helmet of salvation Read. and the sword of the spirit. 
Come on. Which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Next verse. Go ahead. Watch this. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. You see that thing? That's and the one watching thing. there unto. Hold on. Wait, wait. Praying always with, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. We must pray, brothers and sisters. You must send the prayers up. Father, I'm struggling. Help me. You must pray them to the Lord. You must seek to the Lord the most I God to give you sin to overcome. A lot of you don't pray enough. You must pray. Pray to the most high. You wake up every throughout the day. Listen, I'm struggling, Father. Help me with this thing. You understand? I'm being overcome. I'm getting knocked out all the time. Help me to overcome. You must pray. Prayer, listen, prayer is the key. You must pray to the most high. You understand? That's how we communicate with the Father. We must pray. Apply what is written. Pray to the Lord to help you to overcome this thing. Read again. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. Mm -hmm. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Read. And watching thereunto with all perse perseverance and supplication for all saints. You see what it's saying? It says watching. Remember it says pray as, it says watch as well as pray. That ye enter not into temptation. So it says watching thereunto for, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Meaning for all 12 tribes. That's the mindset we all must have. You understand? Give me Wisdom of Solomon now. Chapter 5 verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 verse 15. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 verse 15. Read. But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with the Lord. And the care of them is with the Most High. Okay, put some power in this thing. Come on, verse 15 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 15. Come on. But the righteous live forevermore. The righteous Their will reward... live forever. The righteous will live forever. That's what we read in Revelation 22, verse 14. Okay, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Eat the tree of the tree of life and live forever. Read. Their reward also is with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the care of them is with the Most High. The care of them is, is with the Most High God. The Lord cares for those that keep His commandments, that fight to uphold His word. Read. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom mm. and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. Read. For, all, for with His right hand shall He cover them, and with His arm shall He protect them. You see what he's saying? He says, therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom. Meaning what? The glorious kingdom that will be established upon this earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. A beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. Give me the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7. A beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. Read what you got. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7. Come on. I have fought a good fight. Mm. I have finished my course. I have finished I my have course. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith until the end. You understand? Read. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. You see that thing right there? There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. The same crown that King Solomon is explaining here. You understand? That glorious crown. You understand? That glorious kingdom is as a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand is the crown of righteousness. You understand? Watch this. 2nd Ezra chapter 2 verse 42. 2nd Ezra chapter 2 verse 42. All we have to do is keep the commandments, endure. Okay? We must endure. And most importantly, you must fight. Never stop fighting. Okay? 2nd Ezra chapter 2 verse 42. Read what you got. 2nd Ezra chapter 2 verse 42. Read. I, Israel, saw upon Mount Zion a great people whom mm -hmm. I could not number. And they all praised the Lord with songs. They all praised the Lord with songs. Read on. This is the 144. The 144,000 men. Read. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature. That's Jesus Christ. All the rest. 
That's Christ now. He was taller than the rest of us. Read. And upon every one of their heads, he mm -hmm. set crowns. He did what? He set crowns. He said crowns. The crowns of righteousness. Read. He said crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. Read. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? Read. Come on. He answered and said unto me, Okay. These okay. be they. Hold on. Listen. This seems like you're tired. Come on, bro. He says, He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have, and have confessed the name of God. Now are they crowned and receive palms. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowned them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. You see this thing right here? When we endure until the end, this is what we're going to get on this day. Watch this. On 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, again, it says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my cause. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Not, in, not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. That's some heavy stuff right there. So when you keep God's commandments, you enjoy until the end, you understand that the trials and the temptations are seasonal. Guess what you do? You prepare for the next fight. You put on the whole armor. You understand? You put on the whole armor, the armor of light, which is who? Jesus the Christ. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon now. Chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with his right hand shall he cover them. And with his arm shall he protect them. He shall take him, he shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor. That's the same thing we read in Ephesians. You understand? He says, he's, because his jealousy is what? What they are doing against us, the evil that they are planning and plotting against us, the evil they are doing to us and our children. The Lord says, he shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor and make, and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. He shall put on righteousness as a breastplate. That's the same thing we read. You understand? And the true judgment instead of a helmet. That's what we read in Psalms 140. He shall take holiness for an invincible shield. The shield of faith. Okay? His severe wrath shall be sharpened for a sword. The sword of the spirit which is the word of God. And the world shall fight with him against the, youth, the unwise. Then shall the right aiming thunderbolts, as the missiles, go abroad. And from the clouds, as from a well-drawn bow, shall they fly to the mark. Meaning they are not going to miss. You see this thing? This is when we keep God's commandments. This is how you make sure that sin does not reign in your mortal body. Because this is the reward you're going to get. So we must always keep the reward in mind. And under, once we understand the reward, this is what we're going to get. The journey in between is what we must focus on because we know we're going to receive the crown of righteousness if we endure until the end. Okay, I'm going to end the class right here. So we break bread in the name of our Lord, in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep.
In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that thing. Okay.